Well, this coming Monday marks 20 years since the U.S. invaded Iraq. The war lasted for nine years and led to tens of thousands of deaths. CBS News senior foreign correspondent Charlie Daggett and producer Tina Krauss were in Baghdad to cover the conflict. And in this reporter's notebook, they reflect on the early days of the war. It's surreal being back. The street lights are on. Uh, all the shops are open. I've never known Iraq, or ba at least this part of Baghdad, to feel this normal. 20 years ago, when the invasion began, that skyline behind me was lit up. In fact, most of this area was, was lit up with explosions, airstrikes. I think all of us were on edge. We slept with our gas masks on our pillows for weeks, and now the moment was here. The air raid sirens were blaring across Kuwait as Iraq fired missiles our way. It was a huge story. It was also my first real war. It was the first time I had witnessed such incredible violence, such incredible firepower, the suffering, the suicide car bombings. I remember driving into Baghdad and I was shooting some video on my old handy cam at the time, seeing a lot, a lot of bombed out buildings, seeing, of course, a lot of American tanks. It was a U.S. occupied city. I remember there was a statue, the famous one of Saddam Hussein, someone had written in graffiti, all done, go home. Uh, there were two hotels, the Sheraton and Palestine, and we parked there for the next few weeks. Of course, there was no electricity, there was no running water. The humming of generators on the roof just to keep us on television. We were supposed to be up at the top of the hour. When you're in a war zone, your colleagues become like family. You work so closely together, but we also found that with the Iraqis. I remember one man and his smile. On the rooftop of our hotel in Baghdad, he had built our wooden shack. CBS News Bath, Baghdad. This is the compassionate face of the U.S. military machine. Constantly had to be um, on your guard. Uh, it was a very dangerous place to operate in. I remember very graphically the terrorist attack on the U.N. building here in Baghdad. That was as close as I've been and as immediate as I've been to a building that has been hit and seen the suffering and, and the death and destruction of the people. And that left a mark on me. It is the humanity of this war that I can't forget. It's so many children on the streets. It's a little boy in particular named Muhammad who outside our hotel every morning would give me a big smile. He had no one around taking care of him, but he came back every day. They're expecting a high voter turnout. As I remember the, the first the election day very well. It was a real act of courage to see the men and women of Iraq take part in these elections and risking their lives to do so. The bomb that killed uh, Paul Douglas and James Brolin in 2006 was something that impacted everybody at CBS News. We never come back to Iraq without remembering Paul and James and the sacrifice that they made. If there's a lesson to be learned from this war for me, it's how fragile life can be. The deaths of our colleagues, the deaths of all the U.S. troops, the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Iraqis, many who are still so scarred deeply by this conflict. If today is anything to judge by, with the traffic and the shops open, and the checkpoints down, and the blast walls down, and the razor wire down, maybe there's reason to be hopeful.